So before we get into the video today, just kind of wanted to do a quick ramble, and I'll do it as quick as I can, although if you watch my channel, you know I do ramble a lot. So been an interesting couple of weeks, so you guys may recall uh, a couple of weeks ago, lost a friend of mine, uh, and uh, you know he passed away, and I, I went out of state for his funeral. Uh, then, true story, my wife and I <clears throat> went to someone's house, stranger. We were looking at, at a used recliner. And uh, so we drove over there in my vehicle. My son was in the back seat. He's, he's 22. And uh, so he's in the back seat. I get out of the truck and I decide to leave it running. You know, the ignition's on, so the air conditioner's blowing because it's hot here in Houston uh, for him in the back seat. So I get out, and I walk down to the street, across to their front walk, and up to their front door. And my wife gets out. She takes about 30 seconds longer to get out of the truck, so she gets out. I've been out of the truck for about 30 seconds. She walks down to the street with me, meets me, and then we walk up the front walk. I knock on the door. Nobody comes. I ring the doorbell. Nobody comes. So at this point, we have been out of the truck for about two minutes, right? Now, if you own a vehicle, you know, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you don't own a vehicle, you'll just have to trust me or ask a friend to show you that has a car. So I have an automatic transmission. If you put it in drive and let off the brake, the car starts to move automatically. That's why it's called an automatic transmission. It just goes. So I've taken my foot off the brake. I've gotten out of the car. I've been out of the vehicle for two minutes. The truck has not moved at all. So we're at the front door. We're about 20 feet from the truck. The truck starts to drive up the person's driveway towards their house and the car parked in their driveway and smashes into the back of their SUV. So I run over, open my truck, put the brake on so it because it's still trying to push their parked vehicle into their garage. So I hit the brake and it's in drive. So there's no way it could have been in drive. Don't know how it got in drive. It's a it's a recent model truck. It's a 2015. You have to put the brake on to shift the 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 uh, gear shift from park to drive and reverse and everything. So I have no idea what happened. So anyway, that happened uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, so that was, uh, my truck's been in the shop getting repaired. Their truck's been getting repaired. Luckily I have insurance, uh, $500 deductible. So that was nice. So $500 just gone. Uh, plus the, you know, going to see my friend, which, you know, you can't put price on that, but uh, that was between four and five hundred dollars uh, for the plane ticket and the rental car. Uh, luckily, I have points all, uh, for my hotels uh, from my job. And uh, so I was able to get, you know, free hotel. So I didn't have to pay for that. But that's so that now we're at a thousand dollars. Then. Um, so about a week ago, my daughter's boyfriend is in the kitchen. And he's cooking at the stove and he hears a pop. And I noticed some really funky things with my stove. Now, it's, you know, we live in an older house, 19, late 1970s. And uh, so, and, and the stove and the oven are the only original appliances that we still have. So I noticed the power lights on, even though we've got everything turned off. So I go and I turn the circuit breaker off and I'm like, ah, I guess the... I guess it shot, you know, that it blew up here. So I, uh, I've i got a neighbor that's a master electrician. So I, I called him and I said, hey, I need to hire you to come pull this stove out and, and put a new stove in. And I said, give me a couple of days. We're going to have to buy a new stove. So I go online and I start looking for a new stove, not a stove, not an oven, a cooktop, you know, with the burners on it. And... Um, you know, I, I actually watched the video on how to how to select one because it's the, you know, an oven and a cooktop are the only two major appliances I've never bought in my life. So, you know, I'm like, all right, let me educate myself a little bit. So they talk about making sure of the cutout dimensions and everything else. Anyway, long story short, I buy one. It gets shipped to me. Major appliances, no returns. Okay. So key here. So... 
couple of days go by, uh, three, three or four days, the, the cooktop arrives at my house. We check it out for damage, no damage to it. So I call my neighbor, the electrician. He comes over the same day and he starts pulling everything. He disconnects the old cooktop, pulls it out, and he goes, we've got a problem. I'm like, what's the problem? Well, the house is wired for circa 1970s. Well, in the 1970s, most of the appliances, the ovens and stoves were 30 amps. One of the things that was not ever mentioned in the how to pick one and buy one is the amperage. So my wiring for the kitchen is only geared for 30 amps. Anything more than that, you run a, a fire hazard, a risk of it catching on fire from overheating. So he, all the new stoves, because now we're 50 years in the future from when my house was built, everything is 40 and 50 amps for the most part. Uh, I did find one that was 30.8, but he said you still run the risk. Unfortunately, the one I bought was for 40 amps. He said I can't install that in good faith because it could burn your house down. So <laughs> I have to go to the Home Depot is where I bought it from. So I have to call them. They agree to let me return it, and they gave me my money back, so thank goodness. So I spent two days looking online for a 30-amp cooktop. Could not find one. And so I'm going to have to get my kitchen rewired, and my electrician friend is going to cut me a deal, but it's going to cost me just for the cooktop to run the wiring and everything else he's going to have to cut holes in the in the in the garage the house the drywall probably looking at nine to twelve holes that i'm going to now have to pay to get repaired down the road and it's it's about a sixteen hundred dollar job well he's going to do it for just under eleven hundred dollars he's going to give me the neighbor discount and i i said well my oven is old too. He says, it's probably outdated as well. So think about this, run the wiring, cut all the holes, run the wiring, repair the holes. And then if I ever have to replace the oven, we got to do all that again and pay for all that again. So I told him to go ahead and run two sets of wires, one for the cooktop, one for the stove. And so instead of 1200 bucks, it's a, an additional six hundred dollars, so you know half price because everything else is already done. So it's going to cost me eighteen hundred bucks for the kitchen to be rewired, and then I've got to pay whatever it's going to cost to repair the cuts to beams, uh, framing on the house, bricks, siding, drywall in the house, whatever. I'm expecting that's going to probably cost me about another thousand dollars. So it, it's been, October has sucked. <clears throat> As if 2020 wasn't bad enough, October has really sucked. And um, yeah, so anyway, that's my life. I hope that makes you feel better about your life because <laughs> mine is on a downward trend. Luckily, in Football Manager, we're on an upward trend. If we take a look at our finances there, uh, we've had a pretty good month. We are up to 58.9 million, uh, 2.9 million in profit this month. And uh, the registration window has just opened. We do have a couple of players coming back. I guess I need to see about, I don't even know if I can register these guys. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, let's take a quick look at some results since our last go. I believe we left off with the Carabao Cup elimination. So uh, we had a 2-2 draw with Sheffield United, Pavlovich and Marinov with goals. Liverpool was a nil-nil draw, which was actually a, I don't need that, which was actually a good result. 2-1 uh, over Man United. Anything over Man United is good. Nunez with a goal, Barry Coffey with a goal as well. Leicester 2-1, uh, Collins got a goal and Ids with a late goal for the winner. And then we beat Swansea 5-1. Fosu Mensa, Ids, Fisher, Henderson, and Collins all finding the net. Man City beat us 3-1. Nunez got a goal. Start paying attention for his name in this stretch of games. Uh, not a surprise. Top of the table. 
5-0 over Aston Villa. Nunez with a hat trick. Coffey and Cherlinov with goals. Crystal Palace was a 2-2 draw. Uh, both goals by Nunez. Uh, Tosin Adaraboyo was sent off in the 78th minute. Uh, we had Both teams had a sending off uh, minutes apart. And then a 6-1 win over Bournemouth. Ryan Fisher with four goals. Serkin with a goal and Nunez with another goal. And then we just beat West Ham 4-0. Nunez with another hat trick. So if we take a look at Nunez's form, he has 10 goals in the last five games. He has been completely on fire and doing very well. Taking a look at the squad, he's now up to 16 goals in 19 games, 7 in 21 for Ids, and 2 in 14 for Marinov. He did get injured. Uh, uh, he suffered a stress fracture in training back in mid-December, and he's out for another five weeks. So, yeah, that's going on. So, Ids has really gone off the boil, although he's playing well, but Nunez has become a goal-scoring machine. Uh, the other thing, uh, even though it's our last season here, we did sign Bellotti to an extension uh, to get and got rid of his uh, buyout clause because uh, he was starting to get a little bit of interest. Uh, the buyout clause was uh, about $7 million below his current value. So we went in and signed him to a new deal, $2.4 million a year, and still not the highest paid player, but he's, he's in the top 10 now. So uh, anyway, that is what's going on there. So let's get to today's matches. We are opening with Newcastle United. The board's pretty happy. We've got an A rating. All the uh, dynamics look really good. So this is going to be the last week. So you guys should see this on Monday. I'm recording this on Wednesday, the previous week. Um, and I'm going to try to finish up everything today. I had already taken the day off for that wiring job that I just mentioned. And he won't be able to come until tomorrow because of the weather. It's it's crappy weather. It's cold as hell. You know, usually we're 80, 90 degrees here, but we had a cold front come through. So we've got the cold weather, which is good, but then it's raining and just pretty crappy. And he doesn't want to do electrical work in the water. And I get that. Um, I did already take the day off. So I'm going to put it to use for you guys. Uh, so moving, looking ahead, we should finish out the season Friday is my plan and then i will play i will i will resign and i will do a five-year jump into the future and then saturday i will do i will have a final episode with the plus you know with the five-year look ahead see how forest green has gotten on so i'm going to do all the contracts keep players signed Everything that, you know, you would do assuming you were coming back, even though, you know, because I want them to be in good stead here. So, so we are going to do that. I'll, I'll finish the season Friday. We'll do the five-year look ahead on Saturday, and then that'll be it. And then I, I'll take a couple of days off. And um, I know uh, I know all the guys that I watch are, uh, are, are out long-term now. Uh, I saw Loki Doki pulled the plug on his current save uh, yesterday, uh, which was too bad. I was actually enjoying it, but it was supposed to be a one season save, but, uh, cause he had taken a couple of weeks off already, but, um, you know, that's fine. You do what you do. And I, I really like their content. So, um, you know, it's disappointing not to be able to watch it, but hopefully you guys find my channel in the meantime, but you can see if we finish up Friday and Saturday, that'll be the seventh. And then really that only gives me a couple of days off from videos, but it'll give me about a week off, you know, from recording. I'll probably have to do a little bit of rendering during the week, but that won't be a big deal. Um, although that's the hardest part. And uh, then we'll get into the, uh, if you if you missed it, I did put up an episode the other day for my FM21 beta save. We will be uh, trying to keep Leeds United up. I wanted to do a lead save, and uh, but being that they were in the Premier League, it, I didn't really feel... It gave me a really long-term save other than trying to become a dominant team in the Premier League, maybe winning the Champions League. But we're going to do a one or two season save during the beta. 
uh, to see if we can keep them up mainly uh, that first year and see how that goes. So that's the beta save for FM21. Let's get into our matches today. I hope the ramble wasn't too long, but uh, let's get to the match. We are home favorites. I am playing the 442 flat at home. Um, oh, yeah, we are without uh, Adaraboyo uh, because he was sent off, got the two game suspension, and then got an additional two games. Uh, Marinov with that back, fra the back fracture, so he is out. Um, I want to bring Berg in here. I don't know why. Just want to bring him in. Fisher had that four goal game, so he has been really hot for us as of late. And of course, Nunez, 10 goals in five matches. Uh, hopefully, he can keep that up. Because with Ids not scoring very much, we honestly need it. Oh, and Mitchell goes with a set piece, second minute of the game. He has his second goal of the season. What a beauty. Big strike with that left foot, just hooked it into the top bend of the net. Woodman could not get to it, and we have the early lead. Good job, boys. All right, Serkin over the top, Mitchell on the run. Nice touch into the box, and he's taken down. Oh, we're going to go to the VAR. It's got to be a penalty. It is, and Mitchell lining up for his second shot attempt of the game. And he bangs it in. 2-0, and he's got a brace in the first seven minutes of action. Crazy start to this match. Looking very good. Tell you what, we're going to ask him to concentrate. It may upset him a little bit, but I'd rather him be upset than losing focus, right? Nice ball up to Fisher. He cuts it inside, and Nunez puts number 17 in the back of the net with a little half volley on the insert pass. That was a nice play. Fisher with a brilliant ball up. Nunez, stellar finish. Shows why he is one of the top players in the Premier League this year. 3-0, only 26 minutes in. Here's a counter opportunity. Oh, there's a good save. Very good save. So the team's playing well. Uh, we are in uh, we are in qualification for Europe right now, I believe. Oh, good dive, good block. Not a dive like Jack Grealish diving, but a dive in front of the ball to actually make a play, a legitimate play. Still very happy about the 3-0 uh, victory over Aston Villa last week. And if you did pop over and check out my, uh, my video, my RC Reacts video that I do after every Leeds match that, I, that I'm able to watch, I do appreciate it. It was uh, officially my highest viewed football video of all time. So very happy about that. I want to say, let's see. While they're playing up here. Man, they're just farting around with the ball. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. Let's see. We've had, just to give you an idea, I average under, under 10 views per episode a football manager currently. Uh, I did get uh, 18 views. Hold on. Let me finish this, and then we'll get back to some numbers. Uh, pretty dominant performance. Seven shots, four on target, three in the net. Uh, let's hand over Fisher. We want to avoid a booking. And we'll let them get back to business. Uh, so I had 18 views on the FM21 beta announcement. So that's good. 
uh, maybe a few more people coming on board to actually maybe for FM 21, that would be nice. And uh, then we had, you know, just for comparison, had eight views on episode 52, only two views on the end of season uh, video and season awards episode 51. But the uh, RC Reacts, we're, we have 175 views. I was totally blown away by that. So that's awesome. Uh, I will keep doing that, of course. Let's see. Let's bring let's bring Fisher off. I want to bring Jack Clark on, and we can bring Maddie Cash on to get those yellow cards off the field. That was a poor ball up. I just wanted to check the speed on our replays. I haven't messed with it in a while, but. All right, Berg is in. Berg takes a shot trying to find the score sheet. Doesn't happen for him. Still playing a 6.9. He's not doing bad. They've got 10 shots as well. They actually are controlling possession. I'm going to drop back to positive. And let's do our goalkeeper. Slow the pace down. And let's do one last sub. We're going to bring Henderson out. And um, you know what? Let's get, well, yeah, Cherlinov. Let's go there. He's more of a winger, but he can play that central mid. There he is right there. Nice outlet ball to Clark. Clark cuts it inside. Good pass. Oh, Serkin just across the goal. That was a world-class finish. Very surprising from our left back. His second of the season as we make it 4-0. And showing some signs of dominance. And we will coast home with an easy win. Uh, pretty good ratings across the board. A 9 from Mitchell. Uh, quite three eights and 8.3. Nothing wrong with that game at all. We are going to go passionate on this one. Very happy. And this is a unbeaten record. Five in a row unbeaten. So we are doing really well. Taking a look at the competition, that has a sixth position on 35 points, plus 18 on the goal differential. Gives us a 10-goal advantage on Tottenham who is even with us on points, and a six-point advantage over Newcastle. So we are looking at Europe qualifying if we can maintain this the rest of the season. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, but you know we are showing some real positive trends here. I mean, outside of Man City, we, have, you know, we haven't lost a match since Newcastle, who we just crushed. So go figure. We lost away, beat them at home. All right, we'll be right back for Reading here in the FA Cup third round. All right, we are back. I uh, had already recorded the Reading game, but unfortunately it ended up in a draw. So we do have a replay, so let's just catch you up. We had a 1-1 draw. We dominated this. It was uh, 30 shots to four, and we just... We got a late goal. They got a later goal. I was really disheartened. Uh, the goal was really cheap that we gave up. Playing back and forth between the center back and the keeper. Uh, they got a turnover, you know, from the center back. Laid off a pass. And it was an easy shot. No pace on it at all. And the keeper just watched it go in the, in the net. So I was like, ugh. Uh, Norwich beat us 2-0. And so we're back for the replay. So I decided to edit out the first match against Reading, and we'll do the replay today. We do have a little bit of transfer news to catch you up on. Um, La Quintana rejected the offer to stay here. So kudos to him. Uh, we have made a couple of moves. Uh, Fosu Mensah does take a deal with Guangzhou for, and I, I'm, 
Gangzu, I Gangzao, I have no idea. Uh, but anyway, twenty-six million dollars. Uh, so he goes off to China. He was actually pretty happy. He said it was for the financial benefit of his family. Uh, Kevin Watson, a young player, goes off for 54000 to Oxford. 22 years old, was never going to break the side. McGinley came back from loan, and uh, then Barnsley came out of nowhere with an offer. So $16.5 million uh, for McGinley. And we wished him well, and he was happy with us. So off he goes. He wasn't going to play for us. So we do have that right back issue. And we have made a bid for Simon Asta from Bayer Leverkusen for seven and a seven and three quarter million, 2.3 million a year on salary. Just waiting to hear back on that. But uh, we will be two matches without our starting right back. So Matty Cash has been going. Uh, on the back line for us. So we are away. Uh, I'm going to stick with, uh, you know, I'm going to stick with this tactic because we're, because we are favored, right? So we're going to be Serkin, Pavlovich, Bilotti, Cash on the back line, Mitchell, Henderson, Coffey, Fisher in the mid, Nunez and Ids. You know what? I'm going to put Collins up top. Uh, Ids has not scored in nine, eight or nine matches now. So let's put Collins in, see if Collins can uh, have some cup magic down the stretch here in our final season. Good bit of greenage there. We'll ask for some creativity as Redding gets the first highlight. There's a header out. Back to the keeper. Working the ball. There's Matty Cash on the run. Nobody's giving him any support. He has to hold off. Finds Henderson in the middle, and Henderson drives it into the net. His second of the season, and we take an early 1-0 advantage. That's good because last match we were dominating possession and just could not find the goal. All right, Cash, Nunez with the header. Henderson again, and he pings it. Oh, and he has a brace in the ninth minute. Two goals in the game, nine minutes in, 2 nothing lead for Forrest Green. Hey, I do want to give a shout-out, and I know he doesn't need any more views, but, uh, you know, I don't mind. You know, I like, I like football manager. I like uh, the guys that I watch. I like a lot of guys, but uh, Lelugio put up a new video today. And of course, you guys know if you watch him, he's in the middle of uh, buying a new house and moving. But uh, for the first time that I recall anybody doing it, he took, I guess there's a way to do it in uh, FM Touch. I was unaware. Uh, Fisher got fouled there. But, uh, oh, there's a header and Nunez, his 18th of the season. But evidently there's a way you can import from save points from Football Manager into FM Touch. So he put up a video today with his final Apollon Smyrnus and his, from his YouTube channel. And I think it's Born from his Twitch stream, or Born may have been. I don't remember Born from YouTube, and I don't watch Twitch. So, um it's those two teams going head to head. So pretty interesting. So shout out to him for that creativity. And you guys check it out if you're interested. I'm not going to put a link in the description. You, you know where to find Lelujo if you want to watch his stuff. And if he wants to give me a reciprocal shout out, Kev, Kevy five time, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say no to that. Uh, but anyway, no, I, I really like Kev's stuff. Didn't start watching him really until this year, till FM21. Uh, I've always been a Loki guy and um, finally decided to give uh, Kev uh, a shot. And I uh, really, really liked his Apollon save. So, And then I wasn't expecting that say, that episode to come out today. So I thought him and both he and Loki were on lockdown for the for the remainder of uh, FM 20 so very happy to get one more 
albeit short video out of him. Uh, good cut inside. Oh, that was, he was done by there. He should have found the net. 3-0 advantage. Let's praise. Oh, he tried to do the 1-2 and he let it go. Might have been an offsides if he would have touched it, possibly. That's what we'll go with. All right, they get another highlight. Oh, come on. That might have been a little offsides. And a big header by Lewis Macy off the crossbar, bounces across the line. Uh, I am going to ask them to concentrate now, and they're going to get overwhelmed, and that's fine. Uh, let's make a sub here. We're going to pull Fisher for La Quintana. See, I was thinking if we sold La Quintana, I had Jack Clark, and I'd be okay with that. Let's put Jack on the other side. There we go. We'll replace both of our wingers here. Oh, what a block there. That was brilliant. All right. Fisher. Bilotti. Bilotti over the top. It's Nunez. And he can't round the keeper. Knocked away for a corner. There are our substitutions. La Quintana. Coffee. Across. There's Clark. And Clark right into the keeper's hands, knocked away for another corner. Oh, come on, Bilotti. I think Bilotti was right place, right time. That was just a lucky goal. We'll, we'll take it. Let's watch that again. There was a couple of rebounds, and it just fell right to him. Headed out. There's Bilotti. This guy kept him on sides, just the, the ricochet, and he was right there. He hadn't started moving back, so, you know, that was a little lucky. And I think we're going to pull off, uh, let's pull off Sirkin for Uwajan. And here I thought I was being uh, proactive, stealing the uh, five years in the future thing uh, this year, and now they're up in the ante with head-to-head uh, -head matchups uh, of all their saves. And he's talking about next year, uh, like if he does a journeyman, uh, talking about Lelujo, about Kev here, uh, he's talking about making sure he has a save point on his journeyman for every club, and then he'll have like a tournament for uh, for all the teams that he Uh, controlled that year. So that was interesting. All right, there's an insert pass. Keeper got his hand on it. He's got to do a better job. Got to do a better job. We're going to ask him to tighten up here. here. We go right to a kickoff highlight. And we go back to the keeper, which is where we started having issues the last time we played Reading, when they got the late goal. All right, Matty Cash, stolen away in the box. I really hope we get this German guy we've got an offer on. He looks really good. He's only 24. Oh, there's a good save by Gerard. Or Gerard, since he's French. Cleared out. All right, there's a good clearance. Oh, Collins. Collins beats his man into the box and near post, and Aaron gets a goal in another video, third of the season for the forgotten man. And it's Nunez chipping in to the team leader. Got to be happy with that. So happy to see Collins on the score sheet again. 5-2 advantage. Oh, Collins, Nunez with a 1-2. Nunez on the breakaway. And Nunez right into the keeper's hands again. Come on, Collins tried to show you how to do that.
Henderson. Oh, right into. Oh, that was. I think he hit Bilotti in the face, and Bilotti got called for an offsides. <laughs> Insult to injury. Ouch. He just creamed his teammate in the pie hole. And there we go. 5 2 victory. Not quite as dominating on the stats, but more dominating on the score sheet. So very happy with that. And I don't know when the draw is going to be. I saw the youth draw coming up, but... Oh, there we go. Well, we've already had the draw. So we get 207,000, and we will go up against Tottenham in the fourth round. Uh, Henderson with two goals, four key passes. All right, so just taking one more look. We're currently in six, even with Tottenham on points. And that is going to be here in a couple of days. Do I want to come back that early, or do we want to focus on the Premier League? That is a good question. They actually expect us to beat Tottenham. That's a tough draw for an expected win. They want us to reach the fifth round. I tell you what, I think I'm still coming back. I tell you what, let's skip Chelsea. I'm going to do, no, because I do Tottenham here. We don't need to see the friendly. Yeah, let's come back for, I'm going to come back for Tottenham and Crystal Palace in February. We'll be at the end of the transfer window there. If there's an FA Cup match in the meantime, after the fourth round, we will do that. I just don't see doing double Tottenham. I don't see the point. So, yep, we'll come back for the Tottenham Premier League and then either Palace or whatever slots in there. We'll catch up on transfer news. So I will be looking for a right back. I'm hoping to get the German we have the bid on. We'll see. Hopefully he shows up in the next few days and can play against either Southampton or Bournemouth. Matty Cash is doing the job, but I'd rather somebody a little bit better back there. And he looks really class so guys thanks so much for watching hit the like button subscribe if you're new don't forget we are going to have a little bit of downtime between fm 20 and 21 not a lot should be just a few days assuming uh a release around the 10th or 11th of november for the beta that's what we're hoping or expecting historically so anyway let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. I uh, love seeing them, and uh, as you know, I do reply to just about all of them, and I usually at least recognize all of them. One of the perks of being a smaller channel. Thanks so much. We'll see you. Bye.